You know, what you just said just there is exactly the way that I feel. It is exactly the way that I feel about this. Ever since we entered this period of total grid down collapse, you know, with the exception of cell phones working perfectly, uh, I could not be more happy. I mean, it is, it is vindication uh, that, you know, where everyone had been questioning my judgment in thinking that preparing, prepping was a sensible idea. Now they know I am a man of solid judgment. Uh, that, you know, I, I can see dangers and, uh, you know, respond to them appropriately. And, uh, you know, so many people have, you know, my family and friend network have asked for help. <laughs> uh, you know, I told them to essentially screw off. I, I, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if there was a stranger that showed up, uh, yeah, I would be, totally be open to that. But as far as anyone that I knew that had questioned my judgment, <laughs> uh, you know, oh, wait, actually, there's someone knocking at the door right now. Uh, I'll call you back. Hello? Hi. 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 I'd like to join your group. Sounds fine to me. This is Praxis Prepper. One of the fundamental services that we all get from our civilization is the ability to have some trust in the people around you that you know you can turn your back on someone that you're not likely to get stabbed in it. And also the availability of a variety of services that people can provide. And in a collapse environment, we lose a lot of that. We lose the trust because we don't know if everybody's playing by the same agreed upon rule book. And, uh, and we also lose access to all those services that we've come to expect. You know, if you need food, you can go to the grocery store and some farmer has been paid to, you know, to get food there. Even if you're not proficient in growing your own food, you can get that kind of thing. When s society breaks down in, for whatever reason, you know, hurricane, flood, pandemic, flu, whatever, people lose a lot of those things. And it, because of that, a lot of people have created sort of prepping groups where they want to create a bit of like a microcosm of the larger community, you know, maybe without the vitriol and anger and all that kind of stuff, but at a smaller level where they can get those kind of services and they can have that kind of level of trust in the people that are around them. Uh, I know when a lot of people are putting those prepping groups together, there are sort of like some top list items that people look for. They look for someone with medical training. They look for someone with, you know, maybe weapons training or security training, something like that. They look for people that can get food, either through gardening, hunting, or both. Uh, and it's those sort of like nuts and bolts kind of uh, skill sets that people look for a lot of times. But there are other skill sets that I think are almost as important. Uh, and there was a story I heard on NPR recently about uh, a boy, a 10-year-old boy, a Rohingya boy uh, that got kicked out of Myanmar uh, with his family. You know, a, a terrorist, you know, because they're terrorists, right? I think that's, that's the idea is they're terrorists, so that's why they're being massacred. Anyway. It's SHTF for all those people. They've been, their houses, their villages have been burned down. They've been chased by people trying to murder them through the woods. They've gotten out to Bangladesh. They're trying to set up these communities, but it's SHTF, it's collapse for them. And they're trying to do the best they can. And I think it's important to look at people who are going through that because there's lots of people that'll talk the talk. I think I, I really believe I'd run in there even if I didn't have a weapon. Well, that was offensive. Are you one of the millions of Americans who think Praxis Prepper has just gone too far? Are you asking yourself how anyone with a different view on foreign policy could ever teach you anything about gardening or other survival skills? Praxis Prepper actually carries a gun? I can't listen to him. So I had to put on body armor and unsubscribe so my mind wouldn't be blown. Well, unsubscribing from Praxis Prepper has never been easier. In the past, unsubbing on YouTube was a nightmare. There were mail-in forms, messy waxes, not to mention those hard-to-clean blades, but no more. Now, unsubscribing to Praxis Prepper is as easy as the click of a button. Simply scroll down to the unsubscribe button, click it, and instantly you're back in a safe space. The man cans trash. I mean trash in other people's dumpsters. Just count me out. It's been two weeks since Black Panther came out and he hasn't said a thing. Unsubbed. Praxis ain't no prepper. He doesn't even do gear reviews. That's right. Your safe space is just one click away. Unsubscribe today. But when something actually happens, uh, you know, the rubber meets the road and you see who's really going to be of value to their community and, and who and who's not. And this 10 year old boy who's not a weapons expert or a farmer or a doctor or anything like that, I think is really valuable to his community in a way that I wanted to share with you guys today. Now, uh, this kid's name is um, Faiz Kamar. 
Uh, and again, uh, he's just just some kid who got chased away from his home. And a lot of kids uh, in that situation would just curl up in a ball and, you know, not, you know, not inappropriately. I mean, he's been through this horrible experience, but instead of just curling up in, a, in the fetal position and, and thinking about how terrible his situation is, he's trying to make things better for the people around him. And what he's been doing is that he's been taking garbage from these camps and turning it into kites for the local kids to, uh, to play with. And you might think, okay, that's all nice, but it's like, who really cares? You know, so the kids have kites instead of not having kites. What's the difference? Well, I'm a parent and in a collapse environment, even though it's a collapse environment, I still would care about my boy and his, his mental well-being. And if my boy's not doing well, if he's freaking out, if he's depressed, if I'm, well, he's only like six, I, you know, so I'm not worried about him committing suicide or anything, but you know, for older, older children or whatever, uh, if I'm worried about him in that way, it's going to take a toll on me. But for all the ki all the parents of all the kids in that community where Faiz Lamar is making these kites and trying to help with all with all the children, those parents have that burden taken off of them. And because of that, they can focus more on what they need to do to survive. So while Faiz Kamar is not directly growing food or you know stitching up wounds or anything like that, he's empowering everyone else in his community to be better at what they're doing. He's a force multiplier for everyone else. And I think people like that are really critical to remember in a collapse situation because of that force multiplying effect that they have on everyone else around them by bringing up everybody else's spirits. Because again, if I'm worried about my kid back home while I'm out on patrol, or gardening or whatever, I am not going to do my job as well as I would otherwise if I know he's, he's good at home. I don't have to worry about that right now. I can focus on what I'm doing. So think about that. Do you have people in your group that you think would function in that way? And they don't have to be, that doesn't have to be their only thing. It can be like, you know, Patch Adams, the delightful doctor. Um, so make sure you are stocking up on, on clown noses in your preps. That's an important prep. Um, so it, it, it can be someone else, but is that something that you thought of? Someone that is going to kind of watch over the mental well-being of all the people because that's going to empower everyone else to do their job better. So that's it. Think about it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.